Let's take our material tray scene and make some initial materials to run on it. Um, I'm going to use my rendering material editor slate material editor interface. And come on. Material editor slate. There we go. And so what we see in the slate is we have a node flowchart working area in the center. We have a library or browser on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we have some navigation and specific material kind of editing uh, parameter editors here. And I'm going to look under my materials collapsible um, piece of my browser. And under V-Ray, I'm going to make a V-Ray material, V-Ray MTL. And I'm going to make one by clicking and dragging and releasing it into my view. And then what I get is I get a node like this. When it is selected, the contents of that node populate this um, parameter editor. I can double click on this preview, which gives me a sense of this material applied to a sphere in a default scene. And I can minimize all of these input nodes. These are all inputs that I can use to design a complex material. I can minimize those by clicking on this minus button here. So let's rename this and call this um, ground plane. And the only setting I'm going to change in my ground plane from the, from the default setting is I'm going to click on my diffuse color swatch and I'm going to darken my gray slightly. And I want this to be a very flat, simple material that won't um, really be visually very noticeable. So I'm going to make it dark and keep it in a matte material finish. And I'm going to need to apply it to my V-Ray plane. So there are a few ways I can select my V-Ray plane. I'm going to use my select by name feature and select V-Ray plane. And now if I right click on this material node, I can assign material to selection. So that material is now assigned to my plane. And you can see from these corners that are now notched with white, the currently selected object or objects uses this material. And if I were to select a different object, let's say my sphere, those notches are no longer white, but they're gray. And that indicates that this material is being used in my scene is already applied to some feature in my scene. So let's drag out another V-Ray material and minimize it and maximize the preview. And let's call this material tray. And I'm going to assign it to my material tray. Another way I can assign materials is I can use the out node. So the material exists and from the node out, I can click and drag and assign by dropping it onto an object. So material tray is now on my material tray. Let's change a few settings here. Let's make this a little bit brighter. So I'm going to click on my diffuse color swatch and make it a touch brighter. I'm actually going to give it the tiniest bit of warm hue by dragging my hue slider into my orange range and give it maybe 3% saturation. That's going to make it just a slightly warm gray. And then under my reflection, I'm going to click on the color swatch. Black would be no reflection, white would be full reflection. I'm going to leave it maybe about a third of the way in with the gray. And let's go ahead and click render and see what we're getting now. Here is my darker gray for my ground plane. That works well for me. It's kind of visually not important in my scene. And if I zoom in on my tray, I can begin to see some reflection forming. This is a, a very noisy render. I'm just starting to develop it so it's not as easy to see, but there's a subtle reflection and I like that. It's It looks like, I guess, a bit of a lacquer. I can see it maybe more clearly here where I see the light reflected in that, um, in that lacquer. It is a little sharp of a reflection for me. And so I'm going to change the glossiness and lower it from point from 1.0 to 0.85. And that is going to soften the reflection. If I render again, 
we should be able to see where that light was, it's going to be less distinct. I'm not going to see the sharp edges of the light, but rather some soft indication of highlight and lack of highlight. It's not nearly as distinct as it was. And that's, I like that because that is not drawing attention to the lights in the material tray. So let's make our first material for all of these other objects. Let's zoom out, drag in another material, edit, material um, starting point, and let's call this, I don't know, let's call this um, soft brass. And I will select by clicking and holding down my control key. I'm going to select all of the objects that I want to assign this material to and right click on the material swatch assigned to selection. The soft brass wants a diffuse color that is, let's say black. It's really only going to get its color from its reflection. So I'll set that to be okay. And under reflection color, I'm going to bring my hue into the oranges, set my saturation up high, bring up my value and find generally what I consider to be a brassy tone. It's a little red, a little more red than gold and click OK. Now I may already have an issue here where I say this reflection, this color that I'm seeing is not bright enough for me and is not reflecting what I consider to be brass. And that's because by default, V-Ray has something called the Fresnel reflection on and that tempers and lowers our reflection based on angle of incidence. Let's turn this off, and I now see a very bright reflection. And for most metals, Fresnel off is appropriate. Um, and for mirrors and such, we'll, we'll have the Fresnel reflections turned off. And now I think I'm just going to refine this a little bit, make that a touch brighter. And a soft brass is going to be below one, but let's just see what we get when we render with one. I'm going to pause while this renders. Okay, I'm back. This has moved further along in the rendering and started to resolve some of the noise and details. What I see is darker gray from my ground, my, my ground plane, my V-ray plane. I see white with some soft reflection for my lacquer tray. And then all of these objects look blackish on top and brass-ish on the sides. And that's because there's no top to this room. This space that I'm creating this virtual photograph in is completely dark above. And so the black that I'm seeing is a reflection of that. And I suppose I could put an object in place if I wanted to catch some of that light. But I think for now we're going to leave it that way, uh, the way it is now. But that's why we're seeing it so dark. And then I'm seeing the lights. My two lights are strikingly reflected in these materials. And because of the different orientation of these objects because of the camphered edges on this box but not on that box, I can begin to see how this material performs with light objects in a variety of situations. And when I zoom in on the reflections, I can see some of the great detail that I'm getting in one object reflected in another and um, seeing a lot of that layering of detail into my scene. But I think my reflections are too sharp. So let's go back to our material and set our glossiness down to, let's go for 0.8 and re-render. Boy, that changes things dramatically. Even as the render is just starting to get started, I can see how wide these reflections have become, how defocused they are, and it really changes the material. It doesn't make it any more right or wrong but in terms of soft brass, soft brass is not polished to, to, to a sharp reflection. This is more in my mind of the aesthetics I had in mind for this material. So I can zoom in and now begin to see how that softness is affecting both the highlight and also the reflection that I'm seeing in my materials. The one thing I'm noticing in this scene is I'm seeing the tessellation of my cone and of my camphored 
cylinder and of my torus. So I'm going to actually pause this render and go back in and change some of the settings. I think I'm going to go up to 44 settings around for each of these objects. Say. And as I said before, I don't really have any need to be cautious about my number of segments in this scene because it's it's so light in geometry. And let's go back to our editor and think maybe we want to go a touch closer, 0.86, a little bit less defocused, and render one more time. Now I get slightly sharper reflections, and I'm no longer seeing any tessellation in my edges of my object. And so this, I think, is a decent starting point for our soft brass. So that's building soft brass using our material tray in Studio Max 2023 and V-Ray.